like a castle. In almost 30 years, there has been an endless amount of videos and photos taken of this temple. We're going to the central temple. Here we are, there's a lot of people here already. It's only like six in the morning. You feel like, like you've just been in a whole, in a whole new world. What is it that resonates in this place that makes it capture the attention of everyone that passes by? I thought in my mind, like, how do, if I would draw this, it would take forever because it was really pretty. It took my breath away. I'm like, There are stories that people tell, and then there are stories that are never told, but live on in people's hearts that shape their paths and their lives. Join us in this 12-part centennial series and see what story will live on in you. The sun rises in the far east as a new dawn begins. As it peeks over the horizon, Commonwealth Avenue begins to stir. Here, in a vista dotted with subdivisions and universities, these steeples are the first to emerge over everything else. For here lies the central temple of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. I was 16 at that time, so it just seemed like a huge, magnificent, Palace. And it's really, really big and sparkly. Every detail is so intricate and carefully thought of. And I, I could just imagine how even prettier heaven will be because that alone is God's uh, house. Can you imagine heaven, you know, what, what heaven would look like? While it is now a landmark, this was not the case in 1982 when construction began for the central temple. Uh, this was uh, conceived by KRD, as I said. The architect only interprets what the owner wants and needs. It was built for a very special purpose, purpose for, for God himself. So in other words, it's a special house of God. Whoever sees it, wherever you go, they cannot mistake it, but just Iglesia de Cristo. And uh, when I remember, when I was younger, th that place was only fields. Like, uh, there's nobody, nothing, nothing there. As construction began, so did the excitement of what was to come. And where we resided in Central, we could watch uh, the foundations being laid and it, it growing. Every day we could see something different. The excitement among the brethren started to build up. And as construction continued, details of the temple began to appear. Six major towers began to form. And 22 spires would soon adorn the rooftop. Its tallest point would reach about 285.36 feet off the ground. In total, with five main areas for worship being constructed, the temple would soon cover an area of about 3,670.58 square meters. Resting on a hill, even in the early stages of construction, it would already be a sight to see. Coming from, you know, from the eastern seaboard, we were hearing thousands, more than 10,000 people can fit in this temple, and we were just amazed at that news. The brethren were talking about it, the officers were talking about it. I was trying to find a way to get there. 
7,000 delegates would be chosen from across the Philippines and around the world to attend this historic event. We had the official, official card that we were delegates. When the time to travel finally arrived, brethren would find themselves on airplanes with other brethren, all with the same purpose. One hour before the plane landed, we had our, our carry-ons on our laps. And yeah, we, like we, we took our carry-ons yeah, already. Yeah, we took them out, and we're so excited. And the stewardess came over and goes, excuse me, but we still have an hour of the flight. We're like, no, we're kind of excited, so we'll just leave it right here, you know? So we were, re <laughs> we were really excited. They went, there's a temple, there's a temple. I belong to that church, you know, yeah. and knowing that that temple was built for God's glory. And it was an honor uh, for us to be there. And that was incredible. There is no experience that will ever come close to that feeling. The main entrance is slightly elevated with marble floors. Five crystal chandelier hang from the high ceiling of the main hall, adorning the geometric lines and intricate details of the hand-carved woodwork. A 200-seater main choir loft is the backdrop, with sunbursts reflecting light on the mahogany wood. After two years of intense construction and preparations, thousands of members of the Iglesia de Cristo gathered before dawn to witness the dedication of the central temple. During the dedication of the temple, uh, first, uh, you know, you think, uh, how, how, how does the temple look like? Because it was three or four o'clock in the morning, so it's still twilight, you know, the dawn is just approaching. We have to be there very early in the morning uh, before even the gate uh, is open. The, the throngs of people, buses arriving. When we got off the bus, then I understood why they said, don't get lost. The crowd, I remember buses and buses uh, lined up to as far as you can see, the crowd so, so tight that it was very hard to walk. Um, you can see in their faces that, you know, um, some were, were kind of worried that they may not get in. But um, I think the mode or, or the feeling in there was they were just glad to be there, to be at that site in the compound we're gathering in one spot to celebrate our faith. There was so much noise outside, you know, outside of the gate. But when we entered the temple, you can already feel how the brethren uh, um, Respect. respected the house of worship because all of a sudden you can hear a pin drop. Deacons, deaconesses, they tell us where to go. So we sat down and it's a different feeling because you look and you see, you know, this is the first time that you see a chapel as big as the temple. You couldn't help yourself but to do this, you know, and look around and just um, be amazed that how this structure was built and uh, the beauty of it. it. It just was amazing to, to be able to even be there. there. There's no words to be able to describe it. It just felt like you were, God was there right beside you.
nagpa-processional pa lang. Umuugong na eh. Yung, alam mo yung kapangyarihan na mararamdaman mo. Na talagang, aano ka na eh, kung ba't tumutulo na lagi ang luha mo. The joy that you would have, that God has now come to dwell in this place with us as we worshipped Him, singing praises to Him, thanking Him for this great occasion in the church. Brother Randy Weir is now a minister of the gospel. And though he has been assigned in many parts of the world, the lesson he heard on that day is one he has carried with him wherever the ministry has taken him. The meaning of temple is continuous house of worship. This is the house of worship. So it is called temple, fittingly because of its great size and because of its greatness. The overpowering presence of the Holy Spirit was towards the end of the homily of the executive minister where he gave his his call to the members of the Church of Christ to be faithful, to be obedient, to show to God their, their love, their truth uh, in service to Him. God's blessings were felt in every portion of the central temple, reaching all those who traveled to witness her dedication. I don't speak fluent Tagalog. But even though I couldn't understand every word, I understood every meaning because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Sa panig ko, lalo kong naging matibay. Lalo kong ang, na, lalo mong mas maano na hindi mo iiwan ang tungkulin mo. Mamahalin mo, masasakop ka sa pamamahala, at hanggang kamatayan, tatang tutupanin mo yung tungkulin mo because it gave us, inspired us, and that what this event did. So immense, very grateful, very thankful, and very fortunate that I was able to have that. So to me, it's a life-long experience that rests in my soul forever. of the, the, the presence of the temple, the community around, around the temple was well known. Everybody would know, where are you going? When you say, can you bring me to Dantang Dangsora? The, uh, we're in Dantang Sora, that one is close to the temple. So that became a landmark. No, uh, in Quezon City, it supposed, it's supposed to be dominated by, ano, no, the landmark should, should be the, ano, no, should be the, uh, Quezon Memorial Monument no? because Quezon City was founded by Manuel Quezon. However, the, ano, no, the focus of that elliptical circle shifted no? to Commonwealth area because of the Iglesia Ni Cristo architecture. There was no development in that area at all. It was just a rowland and Brother Iranio have a very nice vision of how he wants to have the temple in that property. Any building that man placed in a landscape defines, no, defines the, the character no, and heritage of the area. Without the temple, I don't think the growth in that facility would really be as fast as it is. The central chapel is actually one of the, ano, no, one of the great icons icons of Philippine architecture because not only the central, e even all the Iglesia Ni Cristo architecture all over the Philippines dominates the landscape, no? e e whether in a metropolitan context or e even a provincial context. So, umaangat siya talaga. So, the eyes are drawn to that temple. Even ako, no? I, I am not, ano, I am not uh, a member of your congregation. I'm a Catholic. 
I am drawn to the beauty no, of the building. Kahit saan ka pumunta, anywhere in the globe, nothing compares to ano, no, the central temple. The, the temple has its place no, to be one of the highlights of Philippine architectural history. Since the Central Temple was dedicated, it has been the place where some of the most important moments in the lives of members of the Iglesia de Cristo have taken place. It is the place where Alfonso and Concordia Ocon returned to, to have their son Marco offered to God and pray for his safekeeping. When I went inside with Marco and I had to walk a long way because the temple is so big. The place filled full full capacity. Given such chance to be in, in the podium and I have to offer Marco, it's really a very, very great blessing. It's something that uh, we felt was a great blessing from our Lord God, having that opportunity to offer our child in the temple. Through the years, they have ingrained the value of the central temple in all three of their children. Years later, they would return to the temple for another milestone in Marco's life. When I was growing up, uh, being offered there held a special place in my heart. I wanted to get married there because it's a special place in everyone's heart, in all church members, which is the central temple. There are many couples who have chosen the central temple as the place where they would exchange marriage vows before God. A blessing in the lives of these couples that they hope extends far beyond their wedding day. For members of the Iglesia de Cristo, the beauty of the central temple goes far beyond what the eye can see. It's not just about the beautiful temple, it's not just about that, it's about the teachings and what's inside of it. Teachings that have shaped Sister Susan Alvarado to the person she is today. My hairdresser that cuts my hair, she's from the Philippines and we started talking and, and I told her, oh I've been to the Philippines and she's like, but you're Mexican, what are you doing in the Philippines? And I was telling her, oh it's because I'm a member of the Church of Christ. And that's all I had to say before she said, oh, you're Iglesia. And it's like, yes, I'm Iglesia. And she was just very amazed that I had gone all the way over there just to see the, t the temple. But also knowing that I'm a member of that church and knowing that I know what is taught there and I feel that it's part of me. It's such an important part of my life that it was important to go and see it and see it in person. For Sister Faye de la Cruz, a choir member from Tacoma, Washington, the temple represented second chances. I am a two times cancer survivor. Initial one was the colon and then it moved to the liver. So on the second onset of the cancer, I realized that God is giving me second chance, more than a second chance. So I took that chance and wanted to fulfill my dream of singing in a temple. And that was significant because to me, that was um, my way of saying thank you to the Lord. After her second cancer treatment, she started planning and saving for a trip to the Philippines, but quickly learned it wasn't as simple as she thought. And then when I arrived there, she told me, Faye, you know, there's a long list waiting on, on the choir. There's three segments, two Tagalog choirs and one English choir. And she told me all of which has a long waiting list of brethren who wants to sing too. 
And I go, but Ate, I'm here for four months. I'll have a chance, right? She goes, I don't know, Faye. There's so many people waiting almost a year. And some are over a year. Sister Faye put her name on the list and began practicing. One month passed, two months passed, and I said, Ati Merli, can you check? <laughs> if, you know, where am I on the list? And she goes, well, there's no movement on the list. And I'm thinking, what can I do, Lord? After three months of patiently waiting and praying, her dream to sing in the choir in the temple finally came true. The details of every feeling and every thought still so fresh and vivid in her mind. But as soon as we sat there, an overwhelming of peace. You know, I was able to, to feel that peace. And I'm like, whoa. You know, I sat down and tears was rolling down my eyes because you just feel that the Lord is already there waiting. And so when you sat, when you sat down, you just felt him. You just could feel his waiting. So above the excitement, I felt peace. And because of that, the tears just came rolling, rolling, rolling. And then that was a dream fulfilled, is serving the Lord through singing in the temple. You have life, grab it, take advantage, love it, and do it to serve the Lord. And that's my driving force is doing it for the Lord, saying thank you the best way you know how. And that's what the temple was. My thank you to the Lord. I found out that my dad was sick and my family was going through something, I immediately wanted to go to temple and pray. Para sa akin, napakahalaga na makap makapunta ako sa templo kahit once in a week lang. Kasi iba pa rin yung pakaramdam ko sa templo po tayo nagpapanata. Andun pa rin yung presence. Yung damang-daman nyo po yung yung kapag ka nagpapanata, ka nananalangin ka. Dama mo yung naalam mo na dyan lang siya sa paligid. It is a view that captures their full attention every single time. Totoo po, bago po ako pumasok po, makikita po yung templo, nakakagana po agad ng pakiramdam po. Siyempre po sa buong maghapon din po ng paggawa, uh, tapos makikita nyo po muli ang templo po, mas nakakagaan pa rin po ng, ng kalooban po. Siyempre po, dalo ito nagpapalakas po sa atin, nagpapatibay po sa ginagawa natin mga pag-iibot sa Diyos. Kaya kakaiba talaga ang templo central natin sa loob ng iglesia. Over 4 million people travel to the Philippines annually. They go to the beaches of Palawan and Boracay, visit the Taal Volcano and Lake, shop in one of the many large malls in Manila, and eat the various local cuisines. However, for members of the Iglesia de Cristo, number one on the list is a trip to the Central Temple in Quezon City, Philippines. Every time we go home to the Philippines, the first thing that we do is to attend a worship service at the temple. In July 1996, we went home to the Philippines, the whole family, and attended worship service there. And we want them to experience how worship service in the temple is, now, seeing this big temple, isn't it that it is a progress and a blessing from God? And then it, it, it makes you more strong in the faith. 
if we really, really have the chance, we should try to go and visit. To, to us, you know, when we go to the Philippines, the vacation is not complete if we are not able to go to the temple. The same church that went from Nipah huts to beautiful houses of worship. The same church that many thought would fail, but has only grown even more rapidly around the world. Simply put, it symbolizes every promise God has made to His people, that He would be the one to uphold all those who continue to remain true to their calling in the Iglesia Ni Cristo. As the days count down to the centennial, the world is again eagerly watching the Iglesia Ni Cristo. Time magazine broke the news in 2011 of the groundbreaking of the world's largest domed arena to be constructed. An example of design and elegance reflecting the progress of the Iglesia de Cristo, the centerpiece of the centennial celebration set to take stage in July of 2014. A story that is yet to be told. Thank you.